Hi, welcome to Ethereum Mechanics, video number 34. In the previous video, we talked about ethons. In this video, I'm going to talk about pretons. And the word pretons was a word that my nephew came up with. So uh, this is uh, dedicated to my nephew. Okay, in the previous video, we surmise about the ethons, particles which make up the ether. Next, let's use logic and reason to surmise about the fundamental particles that make up matter. Okay, if we go to uh, these structure which I call the epochs of natural structure. You can go back I think at video 8 or 10 somewhere around there you can get a better acquaintance of these. And what this epoch of mother nature signifies is over here where we have infinity you have infinite number of chemical compounds. Those infinite number of chemical compounds can be synthesized by a hundred or so elements. And like, for example, sodium chloride, which is a chemical compound, looks nothing like sodium, and it looks nothing like chlorine, which are elements. So we should not expect that as we go down each echelon, each one of these is called an echelon, that the items at this echelon bear any resemblance to the items at the upper echelon. Now, these 100 or plus elements are synthesized by three subatomic particles. I call the electron, the proton, and the neutron. Those are my symbols for them. Uh, and because they're, I call them tons for short. Okay, electron, proton, and neutron are just call them tons for short. And there's three of them. And the reason why they have these symbols is because an electron is at least two negative particles. So there's two minus signs. A proton is at least two positive charge particles, maybe more, and that's just the elements of two plus signs put together into a hash mark. And a neutron is even numbers of positive and negative charges, and therefore you have even, you know, you've got two minus signs and two plus signs that make that symbol. Uh, green means it's, it's neutral. Okay, so, oh, if you want to learn more about epochs of natural structure, go to uh, EMV010. So these tons, but now, you know, since we have infinite comp chemical compounds are synthesized by 100 elements, and 100 elements are synthesized by three tons, then logically, if we follow this curves of Mother Nature here, the number of subatomic particles that are that make up the tons should be three, uh, two or less, or less. That's the natural order of way things go, and that happens more often than you can believe in nature more often than you can believe. If you go to this video, I'll show you a couple other examples. Everything follows this uh, natural structure. Everything's made of simpler and simpler and simpler and simpler subconstructs. And in this part here, I'm calling this section, this area, I'm calling that physical matter. So what do we got down here? Well, in the theory of mechanics, I'm going to show you that all this matter, and the blue ring here means this has inertia, Okay, that's significant of the blue ring. I forgot to explain that in the previous slide. These can all be synthesized by precursor elements, which are two inertialist charged particles. And I'm calling them pretons for short. We have a positive preton and a negative preton. Preton pretty much stands for the precursor to electrons, protons, and neutrons, or the precursor to physical matter. So this is the precursors to physical matter, pretons. And they're essentially just inertialist charged particles, and I'm going to show that all pretons, I mean all tons can be synthesized by pretons. But what about these, you know? The quantum mechanic folks have all these, looks like an astrology chart of these things here, with the electron being one of them. Um, and so what do we understand about, well these things were kind of found in a particle accelerator. And one of the things we have to understand about a particle accelerator by particle accelerators smash two perfectly good particles together. Well, if I smash two perfectly good gold watches together, what do you get? You get broken parts of watches. And you get broken pieces of watch that would probably not function anymore if you tried to put them back together. Okay, and so if you take a particle accelerator and you smash two tons together, all you're going to get are broken pieces of tons. And that's what most of this stuff is. It's junk. Junk is junk. If watches are made of gold, then broken watch parts are also made of gold. If matter is made of pretons, then broken parts of matter are also made of pretons. 
And since these are comprised of pretons, they're called tons in ethereal mechanics. Okay, later in ethereal mechanics, it'll be shown that E equals mc squared can be derived strictly from the pretonic models of matter. And we'll cover those in a little bit. Unlike relativity or quantum mechanics, ethereal mechanics will show mechanisms of matter, and these mechanisms are consistent with observed phenomena. And the other problem with particle accelerators is you're, because you're adding significant energies, you could create excess matter that wasn't there to begin with. Okay, and so in particle accelerators, we're adding significant energy to the collision. E equals mc squared teaches that we may be creating mass in excess of the original collidance. That's the word I made up. But in ethereal mechanics, pretons are conserved. Okay, although E equals mc squared states that mass and energy are interchangeable, in ethereal mechanics, mass, or rather inertia, and energy, the classical mass times acceleration times distance definition, are just constructs of pretons. In any given collider event, the number of pretons are conserved. However, the arrangement of pretons will change, allowing mass and energy to interchange. Thus, there must exist a precursory form of energy from which classical energy and mass are synthesized. And let's talk about proton, photons. Okay, all classical definitions of energy require mass by the classical definition of energy. And that equals E equals mc squared, one-half mv squared, E equals mgh, and E equals force times distance, which is mass times acceleration times distance. We know light contains energy, otherwise solar panels would not work. But the photon has no mass, it's symbolized by that little zero in the upper left-hand corner. So how can pro photons convey energy if they have no mass? This is the stuff about modern science that just keeps me up at night and makes me howl at the moon. And this photon is an invention of Albert Einstein and it's used by quantum grease monkeys. So how do we reconcile this? Because a proper model for light must properly account for energy and you can go to uh, video EMV014 for more detail about that. So how can we reconcile? Well, the new precursory form of energy discussed previously will fit the bill. Uh, and a little side note, unstable tons from pretons. If unstable chemical compounds can be synthesized from elements, and one example is chloroformic acid, and unstable elements can be synthesized from tons, on an octium, which is element 118, then logically there should be unstable tons synthesized from pretons, and that's what some of these guys are. So let's look at what we got now for ethereal mechanics. On this side we have physical matter. In physical matter we have three tons, we have five terms of new electromagnetism, but that's basically the electric field, the magnetic field, and the gravitational field. Okay, and then on the precursor side of the fence, all of this can be synthesized from two pretons and two ethons. And these little things are all not to scale. And from this precursor things, we can synthesize matter, inertia, time dilation, gravity, magnetic fields, electric fields, everything, you name it. So how does this all fit together? In the next video, we're going to show you how gravity and Coulomb will be unified. Thank you. Please subscribe if you can. Give me a thumbs up. Get the word out. Yada, yada, yada. Thank you.